My name is Jagjit Sagu and I'm the president of Lions Club of Nakuru. Today we are at the fifth day, fifth day of our uh, one week uh, camp to restore eyesight and uh, eradicating uh, preventable blindness in the country in collaboration with Loresho Sight First and uh, Lions Club of Nakuru. I, today I was told that this, this kind, uh, kind of uh, camp, uh, it was held in Nakuru 25 years ago and the need of eye care in Nakuru and the outskirts of Nakuru is way too much in the dire need of uh, eye care facilities so we are really, really, really thankful to, to the hospital and the club members for organizing this kind of camp and so far we have uh, screened more than uh, 3,000 patients within Nakuru County and we have also performed surgeries uh, for cataract removal on more than 180 patients till date and we want to continue till uh, Saturday and any, in, fact, in fact I would like to, you to spread the word around so that more people can take benefit out of it yeah and the costs uh, the cost of this the whole entire program it's been uh, taken care of by the club and the Loretia site first and the dis whole district of 411A of Lions International, yeah. A hungry stomach, it's, it's not good, trust me. Yeah, so they have to be fed well, taken care of very well, uh, so that they go here, from here, they leave this place happy and satisfied with the gift of sight. Yeah, and the whole cost of feeding, it's covered by Lions Club of Nakuru, and the well wishes, yeah. Thank you, uh, my name's uh, Simon Jaroge. I'm the first vice district governor, Lions Club. Uh, District 4 and 1A, where we have about uh, 62 clubs. Today we are in Akuru, because uh, we as Lions have five principles that we do. We have, uh, uh, we have a hospital that we look after our eyes. We also do humanitarian. We also do environment. We do childhood cancer and diabetes. But today in Akuru, we are here to give our services, to give people sight again. Today we started this uh, activity last week on Saturday and it's going to end this Saturday. Basically what we are doing here, you come here, they screen your eyes and when they screen your eyes, if you have a problem that you need operation, they do it here for free. At this time, already we have already seen patients, about 180 of them, and we are looking forward for more to come. So Lions Club, our hospital is here, it's called, it's in the ratio, and we are here to give Nakuru what we do best, is to give people eyesight. Our hospital goes to every county. Every first, um, well, every first Monday of the month, we are in Moranga. Next month, 14 September, we'll be in Kiambu, Thika. In every month, we have to go uh, to all counties. So basically, we are not just doing it in Nakuru. We normally do it in all counties. And what we do not have is many of you people out there, you have not joined Lions. We need you to come and join Lions. This is a, this is an organization for helping the needy. My name is Silas Seit. I'm the health convener for the Lions Club of Nakuru. I would like to thank our Lions president, uh, Lion Jagjit, for permitting us to hold this um, uh, eye camp here in Nakuru. Generally, the tradition was that we used to sponsor the eye screening camps, and after that, all the patients who were diagnosed, we used to take them to Nairobi for operations. But this time around, we said that let us change the format. The Loretia team does the screening, and we undertook the challenge of doing the operations based here in Nakuru after taking all the necessary government permits. The most uh, interesting thing which we hear, uh, because this is an revol evolving process which we can say, is like we had heard that there is a blood pressure a human being would be having, but we had never heard there is a blood pressure of the eye which is separate from the blood pressure of the human body. So if you are not careful, it doesn't give you any signature, any, any pre-symptoms, you could lose your eyesight. Secondly, uh, yesterday we found that when we are screening almost about 500 uh, people in different uh, uh, towns, we found that children is, I think as young as maybe four years old were diagnosed with cataracts. 
Now, again, we found out that those cataracts cannot be operated here within Nakuru. They have to be second because a child cannot be given uh, a local anesthesia, has to be given a general anesthesia because he cannot see or she cannot sustain the general anesthesia, uh, local anesthesia. So, it's quite a few things we are learning. Um, and it becomes, it, we are very proud that as of now, right now, we are already finished doing about 180 cataracts. Uh, the camp is still going on right now. Uh, screening is still going to continue even up to Friday. So all the patients are welcome to have their eyes screened. And if you, do, if you detect anything to do with your eyes, uh, they will be operated free of charge. Uh, kindly also note that it is not only the cataracts, which we heard that from the doctors who are operating. There are another two or three other procedures which they can do together with the cataract. So they are operating again all those things free of charge in this particular camp. Uh, it is our wish that even if any corporates would like to join uh, Lions Club of Nakuru or whenever Lions Club of Nakuru is holding a, a golf tournament or any sort of fundraising, please support us because we wish to continue with this sort of CACs where you can see with your own eyes the impact on the Wananchi to be very uh, impactful and we would wish to continue doing the same. My name is Langat Hilary from uh, Lions Eye Hospital. Uh, we are here in Akuru to carry out uh, eye screening and uh, so far uh, the exercise is still ongoing and uh, this is the fifth day. So, so we've uh, been able to see patients from uh, all the ages, young and adults, and uh, we have uh, many of them who have, uh, the young ones who have uh, allergies, refractive errors and mainly allergies, uh, most of them is also depends on the weather. Like now the dry places, you, people are allergic to dust and we are, uh, those who are also allergic to other food and uh, uh, maybe there are some who are keeping the beds in the house. So we advise them accordingly and also we give them medications. There are also those who have refractive errors where we advise them on uh, refraction uh, once they are confirmed, they are also given uh, classes. So um, the other courses also, which uh, is becoming very common among the young ones, like keratoconus, which is increasing. Uh, we are seeing a number of cases with uh, keratoconus. And in such uh, population, uh, especially the young ones, if they are not seen early, the these young ones, as they grow up, they go blind, and they may need a corneal transplant. So if they, we diagnose early, you're able to, there's different procedures you need to do, also to stop the progression of the keratoconus. So it's good to screen them early enough, and also for them to be aware, and advise even the parents, so that they detect uh, that precaution early enough. Um, we are seeing also, uh, other conditions, the glaucoma, which is actually a silent uh, killer of eyesight uh, because it, it doesn't have any pain. And uh, by the time people are diagnosed, already maybe part of the eye, which is an optic uh, nerve, is already destroyed and you cannot reverse it. So if you are able to diagnose early, you are able to stop the, uh, that problem early enough and you are able to save that sight. The other conditions which have been there for quite some time and is still a challenge which we are now fighting is the issue of cataract which is very common among the aging population uh, but initially people used to think it's only an age uh, cataract is an aging uh, thing but we also have uh, young children who are born with it which we call it congenital and uh, others which are caused by is uh, injury to the eye and they also develop a cataract. So all those conditions can be can go through surgery and then you're able to reverse the sight and they're able to see. So so far here we've done like 180 cataract surgeries and uh, we are happy at least people are turning up so we also encourage more people to come so that uh, we're able to diagnose and uh, they're able to get the surgeries done. Uh, we thank the Lions uh, who have been able to support the program and uh, they will also continue to do the same. So we are 
we are happy and uh, so far uh, this is the fifth day and we are continuing to do the surgeries. Um, other cases we have hypertension, diabetes, which have also, uh, they present, in, is a complication of, uh, they, in its complication, they complicate uh, our site also because uh, they develop um, something called uh, diabetic retinopathy or hypertensive retinopathy and we're able to also screen those uh, patients and also advise and uh, we're able to uh, arrest that problem early enough. Otherwise if you they don't get that uh, problem diagnosed early the, the cost of surgery for somebody who has uh, retinal detachment due to maybe uh, diabetes or maybe hypertensive retinopathy will go as far as even 400,000 and something you can prevent early enough. So we do that screening here for hypertension, diabetes and we're able to arrest that problem early enough. Uh, Kenyans are notorious with their self-medication. What advice do you have to people in regards to self-medication for uh, Thank you for that question. Most of the uh, patients actually we get them they already have uh, they already have used uh, at some point some medication and uh, we are asking them that they need to be diagnosed and we are able to advise them on which medication to use we discourage the over-the-counter medication because they are not good because they either wasn't a problem and uh, it's a problem that could be uh, treated early but if people continue using medications without knowing what kind of treatment they are treating with those medications, uh, it may, in a way, wasn't the problem. So we discourage the buying medications over the counter unless they are prescribed by an eye doctor. Uh, that's actually safer. Is there any need for level checker, particularly with eyes? Does it matter whether you have an issue or not? Yes, uh, just a routine checkup is good. Like we said about now the diabetes and the glaucoma, they don't have any symptoms. People are just diagnosed uh, on a routine checkup in clinic. Maybe they've come to, they've come for us for maybe they need uh, eye classes only to realize they have a, a retinopathy or they have a cataract. And some, some people you find already they have classes, which actually they are, they are telling us it's not helping, but at some point they have already, buy, they have already bought the, the classes. So we discourage, uh, um, we encourage actually the routine checkup at least uh, six months to yearly. That will actually um, be able to diagnose the problem and uh, manage accordingly. It was Samuel Duku Mwangi, na mimi kuwa na shida ya masho. Na nimekuja hapa nakuru, na nikatibiwa mzuri, na sikulipishi wa kitu yoyote. Lakini kuna wakora walikuwa wananiitisha pesa, diyo nitibiwe. Lakini hapa, na hiyo ni nakuru, nimetibiwa mzuri, bila pesa yoyote, bila shida yoyote. Na niko sawa. Nikuwa na shida ya masho hii moja, lakini kwa mwaka moja. Usiku naona mzuri, lakini mchana. Sioni mzuri. Diyo ni mekuja hapa kwa rayo ni kutuibiwa. Na niko sawa. Iko sawa. Nasikia vizuri sana hata kwa mwiri. Nasikia vizuri sana. Sasa na ambiyo ni goje. Baka kesho. Diyo waone tena vile hiko na higini vile itakua. Ya. Na ninaraha mzuri sana. Sai hata na esa kibia. Mimi na hito aruthi wanjiro. Yoshe kutoka naivasha ninakuja hapa na kuru kutibiwa maso sasa nimetibiwa na nilifurahi kwa kutibiwa pengine macho umekusumbua kwa muda upi na pengine ulipokuja hapa ulihudumiwa aje ulikushana mimi nilikuwa na shida ya miaka 5 miaka hivi 5 Na kania, ni, ni, kia bio, niende layo, nitatibiwa maso. Sasa, nilitibiwa. Mm. 
nilikuja hapa nakuru na hakuna kitu tu ni nilipishwa mm. sasa ninafurahi sana <laughs>